So I've got this other one matched up to this one um, as far as all the inletting and stuff. They're both to the same point. Uh, you can see it's not a matched pair anymore, obviously. Uh, this one's in maple, walnut on this one. This one's going to be left-handed. This one's right-handed. Uh, the butt plates on them are both different. Um, this one's got a, a plain uh, shotgun-style butt plate, English-style shotgun plate. This one back here has got a checkered butt plate on it. So there's a few differences between them now. But overall, they're the same style of gun. Um, they're still both in the Purdy style, same trigger guard, same layout. Um, there's a considerable difference in the um, measurements of the stock. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of drop and whatnot different um, between the two and length of pulls a little different. So uh, there's going to be some differences now. They're not going to be a matched pair like they originally started out to be, but uh, that's okay. The work and, and whatnot is still basically the same on them, and so I'm going to continue pressing forward with both of them being built at the same time. And what I'm starting into this week, because I'm going to start into stock shaping now. The uh, uh, Everything is inlet except for uh, the escutcheons, and I can't do those until I have this rounded and shaped on the forearm anyways. But everything else is fully inlet. Um, ramrods are fitted. This one has a uh, ebony ramrod. This one has a rosewood ramrod. Both are uh, traditional to English guns. Uh, either ebony or rosewood is, is common on English guns. So that works out fine. And uh, what I'm going to do now is start shaping these down. And where I like to start is uh, I'm going to take these locks back out. I'll take all the internals out of them. Get rid of anything that's sticking up on the face of the plate. And then I'll put just the plates back in. And uh, I like to do my uh, lock panels first, you know, take this down to flush with the face of the lock, or just a little tall, a little proud of the face, and then shape my uh, panel around my lock on both sides, and then uh, I'll shape my wrist section back a ways. And what that does is that establishes my lines for working from the lock back and from the lock forward and uh, I'll show you once once I get to that point I'll show you how I establish my lines and uh, how I work this but basically it's it's really simple um, once I get this panel area done and roughly shaped out I work in uh, basically quadrants and I'll take from my reference line to the midpoint and my reference line to the midpoint and shape it down that way and uh, on the other side, of course, where the cheek piece will go on this uh, right-handed one, I'll lay out my cheek piece, remove the wood around the cheek piece, and then work from the reference line down and from the reference line up to the cheek piece. And it's basically the same deal up here on the forearm. Um, I'll take this off to where it matches the contour for the uh, entry pipe and clears the where the escutcheons are going to be and then I'll take it off and shape it from the entry pipe back to the panel to get the uh, narrowed down to the wedge shape and then I'll work on rounding it over going from center line each direction. So basically working it in quadrants um, in each area and then I'll just work all those quadrants down and tie them all together and uh, basically the idea of shaping a stock is uh, really it's just about connecting lines and by that what I mean is uh, obviously your butt plate is a radius your grip sections a radius and what you've got to do is you've got to tie those radiuses in together so that they're smooth and straight down the whole curve of the radius and so it's really just a matter of tying lines together all the way around and uh, as I get farther into this I'll show you what I mean by that and I'll show you how to keep everything smooth and straight and uh, even across the plane so I came in and cut this with a gouge and uh, right now it's still a bit shallow it's got to come down quite a bit yet and uh, it's obviously outside the line um, as I take it in and, and work this wood down around it I'll edge it up closer to the line and, and narrow that width of that panel down a bit. But uh, for right now, I leave everything a little wide, a little, little tall, and uh, I just start working it down a little at a time. But this just gives me a, a quick reference and uh, allows me to start working um, from there back and start working the rest of the shocks, stock shape down. And I'll show you how it progresses as I keep going here and, and uh, show you how I get this done. I did want to mention that uh, sharp tools, 
are the best thing in the world. Um, you really do want to keep your, your uh, chisels and gouges really sharp, especially when you're doing sections like this where you're cutting across the grain and back here where you're cutting across the grain. Uh, if you've got a dull tool, it'll tear out on you and uh, it makes it harder to deal with and, and uh, more trouble to clean up, especially if it tears into your panel. So you really want to really want to work with very sharp tools across the when you're cutting across the grain sections. So to take the wood down here in the um, butt section, what you want to do is you basically want to take from where this narrows here and then run it out to the edge of your um, butt plate. And uh, basically it's, it's a straight line. Um, and the idea is, is uh, you don't want this to have a concave or convex or concave section in here. You want it flat from here to there and then you work your way over and keep working your way up so that these radiuses from the radius on the butt plate to the radius on the wrist are all basically a straight line. Um, if you've ever seen a CAD drawing, how a CAD drawing is done on a computer where it uh, lays out the the orthometric lines that will give you a radius, that's basically what you're talking about here is um, running this so that you get a, a straight smooth angle that runs from here to here and then you're running that angle at a radius that matches both this and this so that it keeps an even line so that you don't get any any concave or convex area in here. Uh, and the way I like to do that to, to start out to get rid of the really you know bulky parts at the at the corners and stuff is uh, I like to use planes. Uh, a lot of my planes are fairly old. I inherited them from my grandfather and my father and so they're old and they're a little used and abused looking but they're still flat and true and they still cut really nice um, if you do get into some really heavily figured wood where it's got some really gnarly grain patterns and stuff to it um, sometimes a plane doesn't want to cut across those very good and so uh, uh, farrier's rasp. Um, that'll take it down almost as quick as a plane. You won't be able to move quite as much material, but you can go through it pretty fast with a, with a farrier's rasp. So depending on the grain of the wood and how well things cut, um, usually I use planes to remove the bulk of it, and then I start in with files to take it down the rest of the way. But uh, if it's cutting really bad, um, I'll start in with a farrier's rasp and then work it from there. So it really just depends on, on the, the grain structure of the wood and how well things cut. Okay, you can see I'm starting to work this section right here, this first quadrant. And uh, what I wanted to show you was, is this is how you check to make sure that everything's staying in line, is you use a straight edge of some kind, whether it's a ruler or, or a piece of metal or whatever. And uh, if you look at it here, you can see a little light shining through under there and under there. But it's tight right there, so that's a high spot in there and uh, as I move it this way you'll notice that uh, it kind of gets worse it's a uh, little little gap there but it's pretty um, wide gap here and obviously I've got to take this down quite a ways yet because I'm not even close to the butt plate but uh, I wanted to show you this that that's how you keep your edges keep your line running straight so that you get a nice smooth um, radius that uh, doesn't have any high or low spots is uh, stop and check it with a straight edge and make sure that everything's coming out to the nice clean radius that's straight across it down the length of it. So in order to get the same um, lock panel on the other side all I did was take a piece of paper and I just rubbed the high spots on it and uh, the uh, bolt hole, the bolt that goes through the lock bolt that goes through both sides, that'll be my reference point. And I'll just cut this out, lay it on the other side, line it up where I need it to, and then uh, draw around it. And that'll get me the same shape on the other side. And uh, it never comes out quite perfect no matter how much you try, but uh, given that you can't look at both sides of the gun at the same exact time, it always ends up close enough that the, the differences are indistinguishable. So this is a good way to do it and it uh, gives you the same pattern on the other side with the same look at the front and back and the same outline edge. So that's how I do it. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this over and uh, then I'll start shaping the other side. Because of the cast off to fit my customer, obviously this side has more material on it. This also happens to be the side that's going to have the cheek piece on it. So what I'm going to do to remove this because there's so much of it 
is uh, I'm going to start with a chisel and uh, just hog up a bunch of this off of here until I get to within about a quarter inch of uh, the butt plate here. Then I'll do the layout for the cheek piece and then I'll start shaping it with gouges and files and rasps and planes to get the edges all to get the transitions all line up like they're supposed to and it should work the same as the other side to where everything lays out on a flat radius except for the cheek piece itself where it's going to come out away from the stock but uh, everything else the, everything below the cheek piece and, and everything above the the flat of the cheek piece should all match the radius and come out even and then the face of the cheek piece itself should be flat as well um, obviously cheek pieces can be done um, they can be convexed or concave either one and uh, that can be done to accommodate particular shooters and, and how they want the gun to fit but for the most part most of them are, are uh, flat across the face following the, the radius of the of the cheek piece so I'll show you that when I get farther into this but I wanted to show you that there are quicker ways to get this material off of here if you've got a lot of it to remove um, a one inch one inch uh, chisel takes it off pretty fast all right, so I've got this down to where it's like quarter, three-eighths of an inch thick through the widest part right here above the line of the butt plate. And it's probably standing proud about an eighth on each end down here, and it's still really thick through the wrist. But I want to lay out my cheek piece right now and get it uh, positioned and uh, start carving it in because uh, once you start taking this wood down past this point to bring it down to the edge of the butt plate you don't really get a second chance at this so it's better to do it when you've got more material there than you need and then work that down later than it is to wait and uh, not end up having enough cheek piece so but uh, 3 8 is usually more than you need um, they look like they're really tall off the wood but they're really not um, if you measure them they're usually pretty shallow even at the bottom down here it just looks that way because of the way they're contoured into the wood and the shadow line around them it makes them look like they're taller than they are so uh, what I've done is I took a piece of paper traced off the cheek piece that I had drawn on my original drawing and uh, a couple pieces of tape and positioned it on here um, obviously this isn't part of the cheek piece up here this is just a straight reference line to give me an idea of where it's going to go and uh, the cheek piece will actually stop at each corner here for positioning uh, most people when they shoulder up a stock their cheek actually runs about two inches back from the front of the comb so you kind of want your cheek piece to start somewhere in that general area and then uh, as far as size and shape of the cheek piece, that really is dependent on the school of gun you're building. Um, with the English guns, a pancake style is really kind of common. Um, it will be dished down and then it will usually have a shadow line around it, or sometimes it will have a shadow line top and bottom. So the other style that's kind of common is uh, what's called a fish hook, and that's where it's got this same curve back here. But instead of coming up into a circle here, it uh, runs straight up and kind of blends in with the wrist. Usually has a shadow line at the bottom of it and uh, makes a, a fish hook um, appearance. It makes this look like a hook back here, basically. And uh, But it's a similar style of cheek piece and it just uh, runs out straight, basically, and, and uh, you know follows this angle here up into the wrist. Those are the two probably the most common you'd see on English guns. Uh, there's a couple other different styles and of course there's variations of the of each one of these with the uh, pancake style. Um, this is a pretty common style here seen on a lot of purdies but uh, you also see them where they come out more um, like this and back up. That's pretty common. Um, a lot of different styles to this, a lot of different ways to shadow line or not shadow line it, so variations on the theme here, but uh, basically the English style, um, you typically see one of two styles on them, you either see the pancake or the fish hook, but uh, those are the most common anyways. Um, and of course there's a lot of specialty stuff done for uh, different styles of rifles and for fitting personal cu personal customers but uh, for these guns this is the style I'm going to do is the pancake style uh, when you're putting this on here like I said I just uh, like to use a piece of paper and trace off the drawing and then uh, what I like to do is tape it on there get it kind of straight where I want it and then I like to step back um, five six feet and uh, look at the gun you know propped up like this because when you get a little perspective when you back up a little bit get a little perspective you can see if it looks proportional you can also see if it's running straight the way you want it if the lines are flowing you know comparing your lines down here if they're flowing the way you want and if the top edge is flowing the way you want so it helps to, to step back and get a little perspective before you actually start to 
cutting any wood you know you can t trace this out and uh, step back and look at it and see if it's the way you want and uh, erase it and, and change it as many times as you need to but once you start taking wood off it's pretty hard to put it back so get it proportional and get it where you want it before you start actually cutting into it so I'll get on with this I'm gonna gouge this in with a couple of chisels a couple of gouges and uh, get it kind of shaped down uh, basically the same way the lock panel is to where it's got a, a nice dish coming out of it and uh, it'll taper from a, a point out to a wider spot back here and then taper back in narrow around the, the forward edge and then back to a point up here and then I'll cut a shadow line in on it as I get the rest of the woodwork down then I'll cut it in deeper cut a shadow in and I'll start taking it off to make it match the comb up here so um, but that's uh, going to take a little time to work all this wood down behind and, and uh, in front of and behind of it and uh, get it all worked down before I actually shape the, the actual face of the cheek piece off. Like I said before, usually I draw this stuff on in pencil, but it uh, shows up a little better on the camera with soapstone. So put it on there in soapstone for you so that you can see what it's going to look like, give you a rough idea of, of what the cheek piece is going to look like when it's carved out of there. Uh, this will be the top edge of course and then it'll dish down to that second line and then there'll be a shadow line around that so that's the general idea I'll get it carved out here alright things are starting to get down close here on the, this end now I need to take down a little down through here and this part right here in particular and this is kind of the worst section on a English gun to work there's no really good way to get into here and take this wood out um, you can see that uh, getting a file in here um, with a straight handle obviously it's going to butt up against things and hit things it's not going to work very good so you basically got two choices here you can uh, bend a handle on your file and uh, so that you got it up here so it's not going to catch or hang up on anything and use that but uh, my personal choice of tools to do this with is uh, I have a set of micro planes and these work just slick as can be for getting into this little section here and working it down they're about the quickest way I know of to uh, take this wood off and uh, give you a nice straight run from here to there so uh, that's what I use but uh, oops. if you don't have a set of those like I said you can do it with a file um, you can sacrifice a couple files go buy a couple extra sacrifice and bend the handles up or you can buy a set of microplanes or uh, you know you can get in there and try and do it with a flat file but you're going to find out that uh, you end up hitting in a lot of spots and it's not real convenient to get in here in a lot of areas with a straight file so those are pretty much your options on that or you can come in and uh, take it down with a gouge and uh, then work it down with scrapers and stuff from there but uh, I like the planes they work the best so I'm on to shaping the forearm here and uh, I've got the cheek kind of roughed in and that side mostly done and I moved up to the forearm and what I did was I started by uh, shaving the wood down this way to kind of get a, a close to where my uh, entry pipe angle is and uh, you can see that I just trimmed it off and uh, there's quite a bit of extra here and then on the sides what I did was uh, I took a French curve and I used a French curve to lay out the radius here and then I put it on my bandsaw and roughed it out. You can see this side's still square from the bandsaw cut. And you can see that I stayed outside my line and, and left everything a little proud. And then on this side, I've started to shape it down. And uh, basically the way I do this is just like if I were draw filing metal. Um, I work it linear and uh, just keep working the linear on it, rounding it off this way. And that gives you nice even lines and gives you a nice clean radius when you're done by doing it with a linear stroke this way it takes a little bit of time to do it to uh, you know move this whole corners worth of wood down to a, a nice clean radius like this but uh, working it long ways it uh, makes sure that you get a nice clean curve that blends from this very narrow entry pipe clear to the width of the locks basically so that's how I do that is I just work this down and uh, keep working it until I get everything to tie in and uh, once I get this rounded over then I can inlet the escutcheons on each side 
So uh, I've got it all roughed out basically. Um, everything's to its rough shape. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it as the walnut one aside for now. And I'm going to pick up that maple one and, and get it roughed down to this shape um, next. And so uh, I'll come back to both of them after I get that other one roughed out. I'll come back to this one and I'll start refining all these edges, getting everything tied in, getting rid of all the gouge marks and the file marks and stuff. And uh, I'll do all that basically with file work. I'll just keep working to finer and finer files and uh, getting everything taken down to where it needs to be till everything's flush with metal and, and fitting and shaped the way it's supposed to. But uh, that's basically the roughing process for the stock. You can see how it turned out. It's uh, got the right shape and everything and the uh, cheek piece is cut in with the shadow line now and the forearm has the nice splinter that comes down to it and uh, of course you can't really narrow them up super narrow um, simply because this is a 10 bore and it starts out so wide to begin with so they're kind of limited for how narrow you can really get these but uh, this will get shaped over a little more rounded over a bit more in this section and cleaned up um, all throughout underneath the uh, lock plates and stuff so it'll take a little more off of here and, and round this over quite a bit more but uh, for now that's the roughing in and uh, like I said I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to work on the on the other stock for a little while so I've been roughing the left handed maple one in here and uh, getting it caught up to the roughing in stage on this one got a ways to go yet there's a lot to take out through this section and through the wrist on both sides yet and I got the whole forearm to do on this one yet but it's getting there um, I'm at the end of the week now though so I'm about to about to call it quits for the week uh, you can see that uh, I've kept the lines straight on this side um, on both of these um, and the cheek piece is uh, flat and straight and then back here it's straight as well and then the same down here that it's just, you can lay a straight edge on there and, and you you know virtually see no light underneath these spots uh, same on this one trying to keep everything nice and straight as it comes around and uh, then keeping the cheek nice and flat and then down here I haven't removed all this wood yet so there's a you know, whole lot of high spot right here in this section and this is where I use those uh, little uh, microplanes I showed you to take a whole bunch of this off. Um, right now everything on this side is still about a sixteenth of an inch high and uh, what I'll do is uh, when I get this all taken down to where it's kind of roughed in then I'll come in and cut that same shadow line around here and then take the rest of it down to smooth or you know to rough rough smooth basically and that'll um, reduce that ex extra sixteenth of an inch and leave me my nice shadow line around all this so but that's where I'm at for the end of the week and I'll pick it up uh, Monday and should be able to uh, get this roughing job finished up hopefully Monday afternoon I'll have the rest of it done the forearm and everything and uh, they'll both be at the same stage and I'll be able to start moving on to refining these edges and tying everything into the metal work and stuff.